Hello, back again with another quick X-Tool video. In this video, we're going to do an upgrade for the D1 Pro uh, desktop laser engraver. Mm -hmm. And this kit comes from X-Tool. It is a 40 watt upgrade. So it'll upgrade any of the D1 Pro machines to a 40 watt. And there's been some confusion about whether you can then use your 20 watt or 10 watt or five watt uh, laser head that you remove. And you can, and we'll, we'll go through that here later in the video. Once again, X-Tool has doubled the power of this laser module. Um, they went from a 5 to a 10 to a 20, and now this 40. This device has eight 5-watt modules that are focused together to give 40 watts of power. And the laser head is quite a bit bigger. Uh, later in the video, you'll see a comparison of this next to the 20-watt. Um, it's not terribly big, but... I kind of feel like they're reaching the limit of the size of this thing to uh, to be on a desktop laser. But uh, it's a 40 watt diode laser, so it's, it's pretty large. To do this upgrade, you're basically replacing three main components. One is the gantry. Obviously, the laser head is a larger 40 watt. And the motherboard of the machine gets replaced. So this upgrade takes probably 30 or 40 minutes. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It comes with a really nice instruction manual with large color pictures. If you installed or if you assembled your D1 Pro when you got it, then this will be really easy. There's just a few screws for the gantry, a couple of screws for the motherboard, and then the laser head. So we'll get started here and go through each step and uh, show you how it's done. The first step is to remove the laser module from the machine. This is a 20 watt that I'm taking off. And so uh, once I get it off here, you can see, I'll compare it to the 40 watt that's being put on and you can see the size difference. Next, we're going to snip the zip ties that hold the wiring harnesses on, and then also remove the plugs from the motherboard. And there's a little jumper on the left side underneath the gantry that runs from the gantry to the limit switch. That needs to come off temporarily. Once all the wiring harnesses have been unplugged, then it's time to remove the gantry. And that's done by removing the two screws on the right side. And there's three screws on the left side. The center screw on the left side is for belt tensioning. So when we're putting the new gantry on, we're going to leave that one just temporarily loose. Next, we'll replace this optical limit switch on the Y-axis. It's just really simple. Two little bolts with uh, two little plastic spacers underneath. We just remove the one from the machine and replace it with the one that came in the upgrade kit. On the bottom of the left Y rail, there are two limiting pieces and these are the little parts that trigger the optical limit switch. Uh, there's a larger one and a smaller one. The larger of the two pieces has several different positions that it can be installed in. And for the 40 watt module, it goes in the position as shown here. Yeah. 
and then the smaller of the two parts has no adjustment and it gets installed on the rear of the Y rail. The next step is to replace the motherboard and to get to that we need to remove the transfer bar that goes across the front of the machine. To remove that we just loosen the two bolts on the coupler and slide the coupler over a little bit separating those two parts. Then we can lift up the transfer bar and disconnect it from the belt on the other Y rail. Then there's four bolts that hold the motherboard in place. Once you get the motherboard removed from its mounting position, there's one wire that connects the Wi-Fi antenna and that kind of just tilts a little bit and will pop right off of its socket. And then it's just the opposite to reconnect that Wi-Fi antenna wire. Just set it on top of that little socket and apply a little pressure and it should pop right in. Then the assembly or the installation of that motherboard is just exactly the opposite of taking it out. Put it back in position and the four screws that hold it in. Then we can reverse the process for that transfer shaft. First thing is to make sure that both of the Y travelers are moved all the way forward. Then insert that into the bearing and the belt around the pulley. Line it up with the stepper motor and slide that coupler over and tighten down the bolt. Next step is to install the new gantry. To start this, you Clip the white zip ties that are holding the wire harness in place. Get the wiring harness ends released and then set the gantry in place on the two Y carriers. Then we can replace the five screws that hold the gantry in place. Remember that the middle screw on the left side, just get it started, don't tighten it up. We'll tighten that up later to set the tensioning on that belt. I like to get these five screws all started before I tighten any of them. Once they're all five started, then you can tighten down the four mounting screws and then just leave that center one a little loose. It was thorough. Once the gantry is mounted, then we can replace that little jumper that runs from the gantry to the limiting switch. And then it's time to plug the wiring harness into the new motherboard. It's all color coded and they only plug in in one direction, so it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. It is a little tight to get your fingers in there. Along the bottom of the right Y rail, there are three holes. The instructions say not to use the center hole but the two outside holes are for zip tying the wiring harness to that Y rail to keep it out of the way. Next is to attach the laser module. There's two plugs that plug into the back of this module. Um, they're, again, they only fit in one way. And then there's a little flip lever that flips over the top and that's a strain relief for the wires to help uh, protect them from pulling loose from the fitting. This 40 watt laser head has the familiar little kickstand for setting the focal distance. It also has the same focal adjustment lever for if you're cutting thick material, you can drop that focus down to the center of the material and have a more efficient cut.
Next, we can set the tension on that x-axis on the gantry belt. And now is probably a good time to check the tension on the two Y belts as well. Also, this kit includes a new power supply. It might look just like the one you have, it may plug in just the same way, but make sure to change out for the new one. The new one is an eight amp power supply, and I believe the old one is a six amp. Another nice feature of this new 40 watt laser head is the integrated air assist. Instead of having the air come down the side and then go through some plumbing into the nozzle, it goes right through the middle of the unit and comes right through the center of the nozzle and out onto your work. And that's it. That's the full installation of this upgrade kit. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do after you get it all installed is fire up Xtools Creative Space software. And even if you don't use this for doing laser jobs, it's nice to use to install firmware updates. So as soon as you fire this up and it identifies the laser machine, it's going to ask to do a firmware update. And if you click through that and let that update run, then if you don't use Creative Space, you can uninstall it or close it and move on to Lightburn or whatever software you're using. The only real change you'll need to make if you use Lightburn, which I use, is to set the crosshair offset. The 20 watt unit had a 16 millimeter negative offset on the X axis. The crosshair for the 40 watt is pretty much in line with the Y axis, but it's about 22 millimeters back. So through some trial and error, I found out what mine was. I think it ended up to be minus 22 millimeters on the Y and minus one millimeter on the X. And the way I found that out was just by making a dot on a board and then running a square laser job around it and then measuring to make sure that dot eventually ended up in the middle. And I found that the settings of minus one and minus 22 are what resulted in that dot being perfectly in the center of that square. As I said earlier in the video, there's been some confusion online and in some tutorial videos about whether you can go back to the 20 watt laser head or the 10 watt. And you actually can. The 40 watt has two plugs on the back. You just don't use the smaller one. The, the larger plug is the exact same as it was on the 20 or the 10. And so you plug that in and you're back running just with the new laser head. The only thing you'll have to change is the crosshair offset when you go back to, in my case, the 20 watt. I have to change it to 16, but there's a real easy way to do that where you don't have to make the change every single time, and I'll show you how that's done. So in Lightburn, if you click on Edit, Device settings, you'll see here where the settings are minus 1 and minus 22. That's what it is for the 40 watt machine. So if you cancel that, you see in the drop down list over here, this is named 40 watt Xtool D1 Pro. What you can do is click on devices and then you can duplicate that machine and then run through and rename it. And in my case, I'm renaming it to a 20 watt. So now we have a 20 watt machine and a 40 watt machine. And so if we select the 20 watt machine, then go back to settings and set that crosshair offset back to minus 16, which is what it was before I did the upgrade and zero. So save that. Now we have two machines and whichever laser head I'm using can select the 20 watt or the 40 watt and the 
crosshair offset will be correct for each one. So that's it. That's how you install the 40 watt upgrade for Xtool D1 Pro. Like all of Xtool's products, this 40 watt upgrade is really well made, really tight tolerances, and it's just a, a really nice tool. I'm going to put an affiliate link in the description. There's a sale happening now at Xtool. It starts uh, on the 4th, runs through April 20th, and some pretty big discounts that they're offering for their machines and many of their diode and CO2 lasers. So if you get a chance, check that out. And if you use that affiliate link, you will help support this channel and uh, make it possible to uh, publish more videos. So as always, I appreciate you watching. I welcome any comments or suggestions. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.